So is it possible that a woman could have toxic masculinity as well? Well, in my opinion, yes, because I'm not looking at it from gender at all. So there's been a lot of discussion about toxic masculinity out in the world, out in society, and I feel like a lot of people butt heads on this subject. A lot of people talk about it, they don't exactly know, okay, what's the definition of it? You know, how much is past, how much is culturally programmed, how much is it just like leave guys alone and let them be who they are? In this video, I'm going to throw out the book on gender, okay, because I think women can have it as well. And I'm gonna talk from the aspect of yin yang because I think this is super, super important in helping understand this concept and not fight it out so much. Sit tight. So if you Google toxic masculinity, here's the definition you get, okay? Uh, it's defined as adherence to traditional male gender roles that subsequently stigmatize and limit the emotions boys and men may comfortably express while elevating other emotions such as anger. It is marked by economic, political, and social expectations uh, that men seek and achieve dominance cultural pressures for men to behave in a certain type of way, okay? Manliness, uh, perpetuating domination, homophobia, and aggression. All right, so today we're gonna talk about it, because why not? And I'm gonna talk about how women can have toxic masculinity traits as well, because first of all, let's throw out gender altogether, okay? Male, female, let's throw it out except for this one little thing that I'm gonna mention here, okay? Um, we're gonna talk about yin-yang today, or yang-yin, okay? And you've heard of yin-yang, I've done a bunch of videos on it, and you know that yang has to do with the masculine and yin has to do with the feminine. Now, this is where it gets kind of tricky because right away people will think, okay, well, if I'm a man, then I'm just all yang and no yin, and if I'm a woman, I'm all yin and no yang. That's not true, okay? We have yin and yang within us. They complement each other. Yes, they're, they're opposites, but we need both. We can't just be one or the other. We're completely out of balance, full of disease, all sorts of things, and that's where I'm gonna get into something like toxic masculinity, which women can have too. It's all relative, okay? So, um, when speaking the concept of yang yin, um, you know, there's different traits, qualities, to each of them, okay? From a traditional Chinese medicine perspective, you know, yang is gonna be associated with the sun. It's gonna be associated with day and light, activity, movement. Think of upward, outward, rising, okay? Outward, hot, fast, summer. All these traits of movement. Also, qi, because qi has to do with movement. It moves throughout our bodies, okay? Whereas yin, on the other hand, has to do with blood, okay? But blood is actually the mother of qi. Uh, feminine, nighttime, dark, stillness, nourishing, winter, inward, cold, uh, slow. So it's about like recharging, going within, okay? Yang, outward, yin, inward. You can see the balance of both of these within yourself, I'm sure, right? You have times where you wanna be more moving and outward, especially in the summer, you have more yang energy to back you up. Or in the winter, right? You have more of that yin energy going within, okay? Some people are prone to be more yang or yin in nature, but that doesn't mean that they don't have both, okay? It's just some people gravitate. They're different, we're all different. So that's why I don't like to put people in categories and that's where I'm gonna bring in you know, toxic masculinity because when you're thinking uh, something like the masculine, okay? Relative, okay, men have a tendency to be more yang relative to women who have a tendency to be more yin, relatively. But that's not to say that that's blanket across everybody, okay? Gender aside, women can be more, have more yang than other women, okay? And men, there could be men who have more yin qualities than other men, okay? Everybody's different. And I'm gonna tie in the five elements to this too, fire, earth, metal, water, wood, because if you've seen some of my other videos, you've seen that um, I've discussed how everybody has one or two more dominant 
uh, stronger elements within them and that's basically comes out through how they relate to the world how they express themselves um, all that jazz okay so there are elements that are more yang in nature and there's elements that are more yin in nature so when we're talking from the point of toxic masculinity uh, you know it can stem from a lot of things it could be culturally being programmed right okay men there's certain expectations out in society that men need to provide for their families and be strong this this is not any news to anybody okay this is not anything new but on the other hand women can have toxic masculine traits say and this was something somebody brought up in a um in a facebook group i'm a part of um like extreme feminism okay extreme feminism could actually be considered toxic masculinity now this is just my opinion i'm not by any means an expert not claiming to be an expert and know it all but this is kind of i was thinking about this and i thought it was really really interesting because i was like yeah you know what because the extreme feminist approach is actually more young in nature not yin in nature even though they're female and they're about female rights justice they're more young in nature okay they have this more wood kind of energy and you know what uh what is the emotion associated with wood is anger so when you think of somebody who's trying to dominate and control and yes it's about ego and pride and and protection usually they are sitting in a state of anger, okay? Associated with this wood element, okay? Wood and fire are more yang in nature, whereas you have your earth, metal, and water are more yin in nature. But if you're thinking from the five element cycle, each element nourishes the one after it. So water is actually the mother of wood. And water, what is the emotion associated with water? Is fear. So a lot of times, projecting out anger, what's underneath it? fear so you have to wonder okay somebody who has toxic masculine traits who is trying to dominate everybody who's trying to prove themselves it's a little bit of anger in there or something like that right maybe they have underlying fear maybe their water is not nourished and water is the most yin think about it this is what I found was interesting, okay? So if you think of yang is qi, right? Qi is the commander of blood. Blood is yin. Yin is feminine. So toxic masculinity, you could say, okay, um, you know, somebody who's yang is commanding, the masculine is trying to command the feminine, right? Trying to command the yin, trying to be like all powerful. But on the other hand, Blood is the mother of chi. I hope this makes sense. I found it interesting, okay? Blood is the mother of chi. So blood is yin, right? Complete yin. Water. Water nourishes yang here, okay? So it's like if somebody has a yin deficiency, like they, they weren't nourished in some way and that's why they're this way. Like you could look at the psychology behind somebody who has toxic masculine traits and it could be, I'm not saying this is for everybody, but I would find it interesting if somebody maybe didn't have the mother figure in their life or didn't learn how to express their emotions when they were younger. Like they didn't have that yin nourishing quality in their life. Therefore, this is deficient. And it leads to like an excess in, in this young energy because they didn't have that nourishment. They didn't have that, that, I don't know, emotional support or know how to express themselves like that. That yin side, they didn't have that yin side, the ability to tap into that. So they're all yang. And the other thing you could say, well, yang, okay, this wood, this anger, um, it can stem from if it's still this imbalance in water, this imbalance in this yin, this yin deficiency, um, deficiency, it's almost like the fear, right? Fear comes out and fear is being projected as dominance and anger and trying to control other people. Just some food for thought about that, okay? So everything is relative. For example, when you're talking in terms of yin yang, um, for example, like a baby is going to be more young than me or somebody in their 40s, 50s, 
But on the other hand, I'm going to be more young than your 85-year-old grandmother. It's all relative. So, uh, you know, <laughs> just some food for thought about that, okay? So when we're talking in terms of genders and things, you can't just put somebody in a label because women can have toxic masculine traits too where they're sitting in states of anger, okay? So we feel all the emotions. It's perfectly normal to get angry. We all get angry, especially on social media and we're arguing with people. Maybe you're gonna get angry with me at this video because you're gonna disagree with me and that's okay. But if we're sitting in a state of anger, we're sitting in fear, we're sitting in an emotion for too long, then it starts leading to an imbalance, okay? Yin yang, imbalance, imbalance in one of the organ systems of our body. In the case of say wood, it's gonna be liver, gallbladder. In the case of water, it's gonna be kidneys, urinary bladder, and you might see physical symptoms come out, not only with um, the emotional symptoms, okay? And, you know, somebody can have excess yang, somebody can be excess yin. Um, excess yang is gonna show more heat symptoms, rising, headaches, red eyes, dryness. Um, excess yin is gonna be more cold symptoms, right? So think of like the excess of each of these, the extreme of each of these, that's what's going to show out in that person, in that body. Um, so you can have excess in each, but you can also have like, if somebody has a normal balance of yang, they may have um, like still have a deficiency or excess in, in one or the other, okay? So it's this constant balancing act in your body. So when somebody is to one extreme or the other and they're, they're putting it out there, okay? It, it really shows, you can really observe somebody, okay? If they're being over controlling, they're being over dominant, they're being over, overly angry and aggressive. Well, then there's something definitely out of balance with their young. And maybe they were very young to begin with. So on top of that, they're gonna be even more young, okay? Whereas maybe somebody who constitutionally was more yin, maybe they're like an earth or a metal or a water. They're, um, if they get upset by something or something, I don't know, something in their environment changes, they may not be as expressive as somebody who is very young to begin with. Because very young to begin with, you're like adding, adding more to something that's already there, like adding more aggression to, to energy, adding more energy to energy, okay? Um, so I don't wanna make this too long, I just thought it was interesting, okay? So next time you know, this term comes up, throw out the gender altogether. Even though I put the genders here just to, just to give a description of, of each of these, it's not saying because, um, you know, I could be feminine, I could be under yin, but I could also have a lot of yang in me, a lot of yang qualities, okay, compared to another woman or compared to even a guy, you know, who, who has a lot of yin qualities. So that's all I wanted to mention today. Don't put, put everybody in a box. And um, I don't know, if you enjoyed this, <laughs> let me know. Let me know your thoughts. Put them below in the comments below and um, subscribe for new videos every single week. Other than that, have a great day and I will see you on the next video. Peace. This is a statement to appreciate all that is vacant.